To me, this time of the year is always a time not only of a rebirth in all forms and expressions thereof, but it's also a time when we need to get quiet and still within ourselves so that we can absorb these beautiful energies that are now flowing in. To me, it's a time now, especially in this year, where we need to get back to the immaculate conception. To me, this is like nothing to do with the physical, it's within us, so that we can be fully reborn into the new earth. And that is what 2024 is all about. It's an escalated ascension which we are already in now. To me, this is the greatest moment in history that we, we're literally in the breath between breaths, between the in-breath and the out-breath of God. And in that out-breath, it is that we are going to be reborn in a greater manner, in a greater form, in a greater experience of life than we've ever had before. And this is, of course, that in the fifth to seventh dimensional state. So we've, in the last few years, we've gone through all this recabulation of our bodies in all forms and expressions thereof. We have gone through immense upgrades in all forms and expressions thereof. And this is going to continue because you must remember that even as these energies come in, our physical bodies still need to adjust. And of course, this is our old 3D bodies, which now have to transform into light. And it's not an easy process. And in that process, all the things are getting churned up that we need to get aware of. That's what we need to really release in a lot of ways. And that's only through forgiveness and loving grace for ourselves and others. But it's also that we can't take all that baggage with us into the new earth. So it's a totally new life emerging on all levels. You know, the last few years I have really been re led into the journey of, of uh, mystery schools, but also in the journey of Mary Magdalene, as I reported in my France book. But to me, that was more than a journey about just Mary Magdalene. It was a journey of all the Marys, because the Marys, in fact, had the title of that the Mary, the Miriam, was a title of a high priestess. So the first Miriam that we actually find is the sister of Moses. And then suddenly Mary's voice just got lost somewhere in the lostness. It's just lost. <laughs> and the more I delved into this, the more the, the story of the Marys um, started to emerge. And in ways of revelation and downloads that I had, but the most recent of this was in the context of Mother Mary. Mother Mary was not just an ordinary woman. She was actually a soul that specifically came in to portray a certain role. Just like all of us, we are all intergalactic. Um, we are all from other galaxies and star systems and this universe, somewhere in this universe. And in Mary's case, she came in to help to bring in the Christ consciousness into this planet. That was her main role. In that, already her mother had been prepared for this, so that, and her parents prepared for this, so that she could come into this earth, into that, that time and into that space to prepare for the next 2,000 years of this transition, of this amazing age that we are now in. But what most people don't really understand is that Mary, from the age of three, was actually brought into the mystery school, which at that stage was time, but part of the Essenes community, but also that of the virgins. The virgins were the temple virgins that actually served in the temple of Jerusalem. So these these girls became um, the, the, the novices that were trained in the mystery schools. So Mary wasn't just an, in that, that sense that she was not prepared for what was coming. She was very, very pure. And in that, also with the training, these women that later, these girls later became women that actually served in that mystery school in Jerusalem. And they served in the holies of holies. So basically nobody could actually enter the holies of holies without them given permission for it. So they were like the, the guardians of the holies and holies. Nobody, it's actually recorded 
in 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 subtle ways elsewhere and has never been brought into the new testaments in all these ways that mary has been prepared for this and joseph wasn't just anybody he was actually the high priest that was prepared for his marriage to mary because he actually served at the temples as well and he was much older than her but i won't go into all these details what i'm telling you today is that mary was prepared for this role through many 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 existences before she even incarnated on earth so and that is exactly what happened to your soul and to my soul in this lifetime we were not trained in the mystery schools as Mary did, but we are all being prepared now for that immaculate conception through purification so that we can now birth into a new life, a new beginning, like a newborn baby. That means that all the old that has been before is now simply not necessary anymore. We have been through it, we have done it, we've experienced it. A lot of it we miscreated, but all of that is already dissolved and in the process of dissolving. So what we are now being brought into form and being is being brought anew. Now, this is where, we, where this whole concept comes in, that we need now to bring ourselves to move into that period where everything is possible, where nothing is impossible. All our old programming of what we believed is true is going to shake at the foundation until we find the truth within ourselves because everything is going to lead us back to our own souls and our own truth within because it's always there in your intuition it's there in your gut feeling it's there in your higher guidance so that you will not be influenced easily by the outside forces because the kingdom of heaven and truth is within you it's not outside you you know, a lot of people want to get fixed by other people, but healers can only help you to up to a certain point. You are responsibility. You have to take responsibility for your own soul and your own immaculate conception, guided by the ascended masters, guided by the angels and the archangels and the divine. They are there as your backup team. They are always with you 24 hours a day, but you need to ask because they're not allowed to intervene with our free will and choice. But the beauty of this is that that is loving. It's always in love. And if guidance comes to you that is not loving, then go and ask, who is it? Discern what is happening. The ascended masters and the angels and so on will always help you to go through it and will always be there in a loving and supportive way. That does not mean that we are being shown up and say, hey, you need to do work here. You know, you need to release that. You need to get rid of the, you, not rid of it, but you need to work through the anger and also understand where your anger comes from and why it comes from. Why is this person triggering you? If you had no triggers to put, if you had no buttons to push, the triggers won't get activated. We cannot get past the responsibility of what we have created. But the good news is that we can now allow that to finally be laid to rest so that we are free to move into the new. And that comes through the power of the heart, the truth of your soul, because your soul is very, very pure. And your soul knows in the deepest core. And the thing is, the more we work with these energies, the more our soul purpose and calling will come to the fore. And it will be in a much higher degree than we ever, ever thought possible. And that is where old fears might come up and say, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. 
You get more than enough to speak your truth, to live your truth, to be your truth. You know, when I do soul reading, so many souls come back to me and said, well, I've always known that about myself. Yes, you've known about yourself. But then other people started to put you into boxes that you do not belong to. Your training was there. It's there in the conditioning that we grew up with. It's time to get out of all those boxes, even the ones you created for yourself, and to step into the fullness of the truth of who and what you are in truth. That is what this rebirth is all about. Where we finally gain our soul mastery. Where we start to understand that everyone is but a mirror to ourselves and we see in others as they're within ourselves too. But it's greater than that. We give each other the permission and the blessing to each one stand in their own true light. You know, this morning I was just remembering of how I stood in one of the great galactic motherships in my soul form, and I was looking out into the vastness of the universe and the beauty of all these galaxies and star systems. And, you know, you stand there in awe and wonder. And you know that there's life on every single one of them because, indeed, the intergalactics are here to support us in immense ways and to help us through this process because this whole universe is going through the ascension. But what is so beautiful if you look out into this vast expanse of space that's never ending, you realize that every single star is unique. Every single galaxy has got its own colors and hues. Every constellation is unique. Yet it's one single unit, u- universe within one single creation. They are multi-universes. And everything is different in that. And that's exactly what the new life is on earth. Where every soul is unique. Everyone is unique in their own way. And they contribute their uniqueness to the whole but all is one. We are all unity conscious. We are all understanding that we each one contribute towards the greater whole with love, through love, and in love. You know, my greatest prayer every morning is to be used in the highest, most loving service. And if you do that, the ego cannot step into the way because you are an instrument. You are played by the divine cosmic hands. You are fulfilling your role as soul within the monad, within the soul group and the greater soul groups that you belong to. You slot in perfectly. And that's where your uniqueness comes up. If in the universe the star decides, I don't want to be part of the universe, as the earth has done when Atlantis fell, then it will have to become aware of what happens if you actually separate yourself from that unity and the whole. And that is our greatest lessons in the last thousands of years. Now we're returning to that hole again and the oneness where that little star, that little planet, the tiniest speck in the horizon that you can't even see when you're out there in space is brought back into the wholeness and unity of the whole again as she's always been. Lady Kaya has always been part of the whole. She never chose to separate herself. It was humanity that chose to do so. But the beauty of it all is with this immaculate conception into the wholeness, the truth, the unity that we in truth are. We are born into a totally new life and new beginnings. And that's what the next 10 years is all about up to 2032, 
it is that immaculate conception and birth of the new you in that fifth to seventh dimensional state. And you know that we can access multidimensional states already. I do constantly. But the thing is, we also need to ground that into Mother Earth. We need to ground our soul mission and purpose into Mother Earth. So they tell me, and I've been doing this for the last few months, start focusing on what you do wish to co-create. Start focusing on what it is that you would like to blossom forth in the new earth. And then sow the seeds of that. Not only imagine it, not only visualize it, visualize it, not only see the vision of it, but take it in your heart and love it into form and being. And that is what this time is all about. You're never too old to be reborn. You're never too young to be reborn in the truth and who of you you are. And I was just saying to a group the other day, I said, imagine if we taught our children to be soul empowered from the day they are born. And that's what they used to do in ancient times, that soul reading's done at birth so that they could immediately identify the soul gifts and talents that this child came in with. And then that child would immediately be able to bring its genius into the world as a genius is nurtured and lovingly brought into form and being. Our relationships would change where we enhance each other lovingly. And we allow the other to stand into the, in the fullness of their own light as much as we stand in the fullness of our own light and never in anyone's shadow. The communities of light being formed, the new simplicity of life. We will go to the basics, but it will be actually in a much higher evolutionary way. It will be high tech, but it will be beautifully balanced and in unity with all of life. And that includes animals and birds and trees and plants, where we will have ecosystems where we do not need to use all these poisons and pesticides and goodness knows what. If you go and listen to those who really work with these animals and who really work with these birds, for instance, the birds of prey or whatever. I mean, I was at this one raptor center that's here right outside of us. A guy explaining here that that um, as we poison the earth and we, and we use poisons on the vegetables or whatever plantations we have, we are poisoning the owls, we are poisoning the rats, not even the rats, it's the owls and the, and the birds of prey because they eat the rats because that is, that is their prey. But if you actually put owl houses up everywhere, then the owls will make sure that there's no rats or any vermin left on, on the, in the plantation. And they're convincing the farmers now of doing that. Those farmers have no problems because if it's not the owls that will go and eat the rats and the mice and the vermin, it will be the birds of prey. So when you work with them, you create a beautiful environment where everything can thrive and you do not need all that stuff. We are returning to wholeness and unity and we communicate with the animals telepathically and through a heart center. We communicate with the trees. We communicate with the plants. We communicate with the birds. The birds are messengers. And the insects. We start to understand the beautiful, amazing bee that creates honey. But honey is a natural antibiotic, and it's a natural way of an elixir of life. You go on, and we, I was in on on um, 
a trip in a game park at Timbavati Graham Park where the game radio was showing us these massive anthills and how they are a whole ecosystem in itself and that they actually, when the anthill is, is redundant, the bur- burrowing animals go in and that's their safety, that's their home. So the ants do amazing work. When last did you go and contemplate on what the ant are, is doing and what the bee is doing, and what the butterfly is doing, what any insect is doing. Even mosquitoes have a role in the whole environment. When we start to understand the beauty of creation and and the perfection of creation, we stand in awe and wonder. And then we cannot hurt or harm anything because we know we're hurting and harming only ourselves. And that is now what the rebirth is all about. That's what the Immaculate Conception is all about. And it starts within you, through your open heart, and through your ability now to let go of the old life completely. You don't need all that anymore. Let go of all the baggage. The patternings of pain and suffering, let them go. That doesn't mean that everything's going to just disappear overnight. You will still have to do the inner work because you're responsible for that in your own way. But it's teaching you a lot. It's bringing out your freedom to now live in a much higher vibrational frequency where you don't have all these jarring energies around because you're purified from within and you're birthed into your new light body form. To me, this is immensely exciting. You know what? We have such beautiful backup teams everywhere. And I meet with the intergalactic councils, when I meet with the universal councils, when I meet with Lord Melchizedek and the high orders of Melchizedek, when I work with Commander Ashta and all those beings of light that are with us, Serapis Bay, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, the whole Ascended Hosts, the love that they have for us goes beyond words and goes beyond any expression. Once you experience that type of love and that type of unity you cannot go back to creating disharmony and goodness knows what we miscreated because you know a higher truth and you start living that truth and that path is through purity it's through no other paths it's it's this inner shift more than an outer shift. As you shift within, the rest shift. So that is my December message for you. It's my Christmas message for you. May you have an immaculate conception for your own birth into the new earth this December in all forms and ways and expression thereof. May you be blessed in the deepest core of your soul with infinite love, with infinite wisdom, with infinite knowing, with infinite guiding. Love and blessings.